All right, what is going on guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media back with another Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross video. And today I want to give you guys a quick explanation or breakdown of the whole weapon slash cosmetic slash outfit system in this game because I feel like the game itself doesn't really do that great of a job explaining these things and there seems to be a lot of confusion among newer players about how these things actually work. I mean, I was just there like maybe a month ago when I first started the game. Um, there were a lot of stuff I didn't know about that I know now and it was no thanks to the game because I had to do my own research. I had to read a lot of posts, talk to a lot of people and just figure it out, right? So hopefully with this video, I can save you guys a ton of time, save you a ton of research and uh, just put all this information in one place. So without further ado, Let's jump right into it. And I guess the first thing I'll say here is something that a lot of you probably already know. The fact that these weapons, cosmetics, and outfits aren't purely aesthetic. They're not just for looks, even though a lot of them look really, really dope and they make your character look different. They also will provide some pretty significant stat boosts to your characters that will make a big difference in both PvE and PvP content. So just to show you exactly what I'm talking about, Let's pop over to my box here, and uh, why don't we use my red Hellbrum as an example. So, if you go to the closet here, you'll see that the weapon he currently has equipped, the Zephyr Sword, gives him an additional 180 attack, 2% pierce rate, 3% crit chance, and 2% crit damage. And uh, his outfit here is the Forest Guardian, which gives him 180 defense, 2% resistance, and 2% crit resistance and finally the cosmetic he has equipped is the artistically learned noble which gives him 930 hp two percent regeneration rate sorry one percent regeneration rate and two percent lifesteal so when you combine all of those boosts from these three items that's a pretty significant difference right there but one other thing you might have also noticed is that even though the sword is only supposed to give him 180 attack and 2% uh, extra crit damage, you might notice here that he's getting 610 total additional attack, that's the green part right here, as well as 14% extra crit damage. And this is the part I want to strongly emphasize in this video because this is something that the game just does not do a great job. Of explaining to people and that's the fact that you can still get the stat boosts from a certain item like a weapon cosmetic or outfit even if you don't have that item equipped on the character which doesn't seem to make a lot of sense just logically because you would think that like if you want the stat boost from an item you should have it equipped and should have the character actually using it like this sword here right but that's not how the system works essentially how it works is that you can register up to five items from each of these sections, outfit, weapon, and cosmetic, and uh, all the items that are registered will give their stats to the character. So for example, with the weapons here, even though the equipped item is the Zephyr Sword, Helbrum is actually getting the stat boosts from all five of these weapons here because they're all registered, and combined, they give 610 attack, 14% crit damage, 7% crit chance, and 2% crit rate now of course you have the option of registering other items for example if you don't like this weapon you don't like the stats it gives you can click the uh, red arrow here to deregister it and then you can register something else like this one right here just click that green up arrow and that one is now registered you're now getting the stats from that weapon as opposed to the one that you just unregistered and that's essentially how this system works so the good thing about this, which is once again something I didn't figure out for a while, is that if you don't like how a item looks, like an outfit or whatever, you don't like how it looks but you still want the stats from it, you can still get the stats just by registering the item and then equipping something else. So let's say I really, uh, let me just register this one real quick. Okay, so let's say I really don't like how this Zephyr, Zephyr sword looks, even though I do because it looks dope, but let's say I'm one of those people that doesn't like it, then I can literally just switch it over to like this one right here. Just click change here. And now he'll have 
the um, Sword of the Sacred Tree physically equipped, but he's still getting the stats from this UR sword, right? So that's essentially how it works. Same thing with the cosmetics here. He's getting a total of 2,790 HP from these three cosmetics. And of course, same thing with outfits here. Four outfits combined give him 600 defense, 4% uh, crit resistance, 4% resistance, and 8% uh, crit defense so hopefully this is something new for you guys if you already knew about this then quick refresher i guess but i do think that a lot of newer players who just start the game will not know about it about it and uh, it's not something that i think the game really gets across very well now going back to what i said in the beginning of this video these cosmetics, these weapons, these outfits can make a pretty significant difference, especially if you have five of them registered in each section, because as you can see, man, these five weapons give him 610 attack, which is a pretty significant boost. That is like, what, seven or 8% additional attack on his total attack. And uh, obviously a 7% extra chance to crit is very significant as well. And for cosmetics here, I only have three of them, unfortunately. If I had five, it might be closer to something like 4,500 additional HP, which can help you potentially survive an additional attack in PvP or PvE content. And uh, obviously, defense makes a big difference too, because you're taking less damage. So if we're talking about like PvP, let's say you're in a situation where you're doing a mirror match and the enemy literally has the exact same characters as you and all of your characters are fully awakened, fully leveled up, but um, you have better cosmetics than the enemy, then that additional like 500 attack or 3000 HP or 200 defense or whatever that you have over your opponent could be the deciding factor for who wins that fight. Now, of course, there's a lot of other factors too, like um, how good you are, the skill of the player, um, you know, what cards you draw, because that's also, there's also an element of luck to this game, of course, and, uh, you know, just team composition and all that stuff, but you never know, like, a couple hundred additional attack, a couple hundred additional defense could be what wins you that fight. So in PvP, obviously a big difference maker, and uh, for PvE content, same thing, you can do more damage to the enemy, like a boss or something like that, you can take less damage, and potentially it can help you survive like a boss super or something like that. Now, one question I get from a lot of people is uh, whether or not this stuff is actually worth it because, you know, some of these weapons, some of these cosmetics, especially the higher rarity ones like the SSR and UR ones can be pretty expensive, right? Like this sword right here cost me 30 diamonds, which is the same price as a multi. So yeah, it's pretty steep, right? It's pretty steep and it's not something I would recommend people to work on or you know invest in at least in the beginning because as much as uh, you know these stats make a difference it makes a much bigger difference if you're leveling up your characters if you're limit breaking them if you're awakening them so if you guys don't have your characters fully limit broken fully awakened yet then i would focus on doing that first as opposed to buying these cosmetics here and uh, the cosmetics i think are more of a you know, later in the game kind of thing, like once you're in the higher levels of PvP or, you know, you're facing a lot of like bosses on like like the demons on hard and extreme and all that stuff. Like, yes, this stuff could make a difference, but it's not something I think to worry about in the early game. And once again, is it worth it? I mean, it's really up to you, right? Depends on how much you care about having some additional stats and all that stuff over your opponent in PvP or just a little bit more attack and defense in PvE content and, you know, potentially survive bosses more. Totally up to you. I'm not going to say it's worth it per se, because I don't think it's really necessary. But to me, having these like cool looking weapons and cool looking accessories makes the game more fun. I like looking at my characters with like the UR weapon and the, you know, different hats and all that stuff. Like for example, my um, Merlin here, she has the, that black dress. I, I think it's called Black Ember or something like that. Hold on, let me, let me check, let me check. Um, it's called, yeah, Black Ember. So I think it looks really, really good and it makes me want to play Merlin a lot more. And, uh, you know, for me, it makes a difference in that sense. So if you guys get more enjoyment out of the game from using these uh, accessories and these outfits and stuff like that, then I think go for it because that's the whole point. You want to make this game as fun as possible for you, right? But once again, I don't think it's absolutely necessary. You can totally get to champion rank in PvP with no additional cosmetics. You can totally get to, or weapons and outfits, you can totally 
beat all the PvE content without having to pay diamonds for all this stuff. So uh, I guess that is today's video. That is everything I wanted to say. I know I rambled quite a bit, but there's a lot of stuff going on in my mind that I wanted to just inform you guys of. All this stuff that um, I think newer players should know and uh, it's important to know and that is pretty much gonna oh you know what let me switch back to my old weapon because i like the other one a lot better i mean this one's nice too but the other weapon looks way more dope so let's change this one back to the ur sword anyways that is today's video i think that's everything i wanted to say that's everything i wanted to cover and um if there's something i missed then feel free to let me know in the comments down below and uh you know remind me so that everybody else who's watching this video and in the comments can see it as well and that is going to do it for today's video. I apologize for making it probably a lot longer than it had to be, but hopefully this video helped some of you out there who were unsure about these things. And thank you guys for watching the video. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now, and while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you wanna stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it, I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.